In science, it is critical that any investigation that is used follows a set of criteria designed to test only one variable in which to collect data about the changes observed. This is called a controlled experiment. Every experiment begins with a question you wish to answer and a hypothesis that is tested. The question we're trying to answer in this experiment is if lentil seeds buoyancy is affected by carbonation in water. The hypothesis could be that one believes they will float, or you may believe they will sink. Based upon inferences or past experiences, you may have observed in the past when items have been added to water or carbonated drinks. The independent variable, also known as the changed or manipulated variable in this experiment, is the use of non-carbonated water from the faucet and carbonated water found in club soda. All other variables will remain the same. This includes the amount of water to be tested, the temperature of both liquids, the types of containers, the number and sizes of the lentil seeds, and the times in which they will be observed. These are called the controlled variables. Recalling our question that began this investigation, we would like to know if lentil seeds will float or sink based upon the water being carbonated or not. Students will be making observations based on this question. In any experiment, the observation that is directly affected by the independent or change variable is our dependent variable. This is easy to remember if you understand that the changes we are seeing are dependent upon the variables we changed. If we are simply making an observation without using numbers, as in this case, we call this a qualitative observation. If in our observation we decided to actually count the number of seeds that may rise and fall, our observation will be quantitative. The difference is that qualitative does not rely on numbers for the data we are collecting, and quantitative observations require numerical data to answer the question we're trying to answer. As students follow their lab procedures, they place identical numbers of lentil seeds to two separate but identical 150 milliliter beakers. They add 50 milliliters of room temperature water to one beaker and 50 milliliters of room temperature carbonated water to the other beaker. Once the water is added, they begin their use of qualitative observation by watching the lentil seeds within the two liquid environments. Observing the seeds, it becomes quickly obvious that the carbonated water has an effect on the buoyancy of the seeds. Close observation shows the bubbles of carbon dioxide are attracted to the individual seeds and cause them to rise up in the beakers. As they reach the surface, the bubbles begin to pop, making the seeds sink. However, the seeds once again at the bottom are attracted by new rising bubbles, causing the seeds to rise up. This cycle continues as long as the bubbles form within the club soda. Within the tap water, the seeds remain at the bottom of the beaker during the entire observation time. Once we have made our observations, we are then able to analyze the qualitative data and make our conclusions to answer the initial question. In this experiment, we would state that our observations led us to conclude that lentil seeds are affected by their ability to sink or float based upon the use of carbonation in water. The lentil seeds will float in carbonated water due to the fact the carbon dioxide bubbles attach themselves directly to the seeds. Tap water does not have carbonation and as such, the seeds remain at the bottom of the beaker. It's important to note that multiple trials and replication of the experiment by other individuals are necessary to form empirical data, also known as strong data. When the results are the same or conclusive among the multiple trials and replicated experiments, only then do you have the necessary data to publish or announce your findings to the scientific community. Other scientists may be skeptical doubting the results and will utilize your procedures to ensure the results were objective. When scientists allow their personal opinions or feelings to influence the results, they become subjective and cannot be accepted. Another problem is when more than one variable is changed, it introduces a form of bias that could indirectly affect the data causing it to be scrutinized. By having multiple trials and using other scientists to replicate the experimental design, it helps to eliminate any subjective and bias elements within the investigation. Mm -hmm.